Welcome. I'm very happy to finally introduce you to version 4 of Stylist Hair Pro. This has been quite a journey and it's taken me a long time, but uh, I think you'll like it. There's quite a lot of changes and new and improved stuff. So without any delay, let's get into it. As per usual, we select our base mesh. Go to the add-on tab here. You'll notice when I click on add strand, it opens this new pop-up window where you can select the length of the strand as well as the number of points in the curve. This is uh, just to get you started. The first time it's going to import the modifier and it's going to apply it directly to the curve. So uh, we have the geometry straight away. A uh, feature I have added is the scale of the strand is going to take the size of the base mesh as context. So if you're working on a bigger scale, the added strand will be proportional to the size of the base mesh. Previously, you might add a strand and it will be really long or very tiny. Now it's contextual. Okay, immediately we can take a look at the new interface. It is now tapped and you can select the different sections from here. The quick menu is this button over here. It works like before. Just right click on it to assign a shortcut. I use D and now you have quick access to the settings. This is the main thickness setting. You'll notice next to it, there is this gizmo toggle. This will allow you to set the shape of the strand from within the viewport, which is a bit more intuitive. Stuff like the flatten, open or close the ends, the bulging up, yeah. There's also one for the rotations. We can twist it up. I didn't think this would be very useful, but actually when I was testing it, I ended up using it a lot. So uh, let me know if you want any more settings controlled by Gizmos. and uh, you can hide all the gizmos from this button. These are the end shape settings for the root and for the tip. The sections might have these tabs with uh, different settings. Here we have the pinch. I can pinch off the root and the tip. With this, we can now see the strand is divided into three regions, the root, the mid or body and the tip. The size here controls how big those regions are. There are a bunch of settings for the pin shape and you can control these with the gizmos as well. You notice here we have a reset for the entire section. And also there is a reset for each tab here. This is going to be common throughout the add-on. The bump section, for example, it has four subsections and they all have a separate reset and a copy. One major change is with the hair profile. There is now a smart profile which is going to adapt to whatever style of hair strand you're making. They are spinched and you can control how sharp it is and boxy and you can smooth its edges. If you want to add substrands, it is now from the bumps section over here. The previous procedural profiles are now under simple. You've got the boxy triangle and uh, all the others and there's also the custom profile where you can select a curve object as the profile or if you have multiple strands 
you can set a collection of profile curves and it's going to pick a curve from the collection at random. However, if we use the smart profile, we have the ability here at the new freeze panel, we can split the tip of the hair strand, like so. And again, this only works with the smart profile. Here you can pick different versions, control the density of the splits, and there's a bunch of randomization options. Just play around until you get something you like. You can bend the splits to twirl them around, or you can curl them up. Now you notice if I increase the radius of the curl, the geometry around the tips gets a bit jagged. This is because we don't have enough resolution. This button here will show us the wireframe. And yeah, that's not enough resolution to capture the curl nicely. So let's get, so let's go to the hair settings. And here you can now set a resolution for the viewport and for the render. Just uncheck this sync option and you can set a specific resolution just for the render. So, so we want to increase the curve points to make this smoother. However, this increases the points on the entire curve. If we don't want that, we can come down here to the density and we can increase the resolution just on the tip. That way we don't blow up the point count of the geometry. Helps to keep things optimized, all right? Now, to help you along, you've probably noticed this tip here. I've placed these in and around the UI to give you a bit more information about the workings of the add-on. This particular one tells us about the grooming optimization feature. Uh, basically, if you have a higher density geometry, if I try to groom here, it's going to be a bit laggy. And it's even worse if you have multiple curves. So if I turn this on, when I go to groom the strand, it shifts to a lower resolution and now it's very snappy. When I go back to object mode, it returns to the set resolution. Right, so this will be very helpful to have a smooth editing experience. And these are the tips. Of course, you still have the tutorial and this will guide you through the entire add-on. If you don't want to see these, you can go to the preferences here and uh, disable the tips. You can also disable the tutorial. Let's get back to the freeze panel. There's a bunch of other settings here. You can freeze the entire hair strand. This basically is a way to create a messy hairstyle. You can also create uh, flyaway strands, which are additional hair strands that follow the main strand. These are great to quickly add a lot of detail to your hairstyles. You can twist them around, freeze them up, and so on. There is also a bunch of settings for them, so play around. Braids now have these three roots, which uh, simulate the three strands you would use to weave the braid. Now, one important thing, if we read this uh, tip here, is that uh, we need to set the base mesh surface for the hair strand. This should have been done automatically, but if it hasn't, we can go to the settings in the miscellaneous tab, and here you can see the base mesh and its UV map. This is important to make sure they are always selected. Uh, otherwise, you might get a bunch of bugs like this. If you use hair curves, you can use this auto select button to quickly select the base. Right. Once these are set, we can move the braid roots with these widgets to assist their attachment.
And also there's a bunch of settings for their shape. So we can create a more natural braid. And this corresponds to the root size for which we have a shortcut here. Otherwise it's in the shape settings. And of course you have all the other settings for the braid body and the individual strands. Dynamics now work on deforming mesh surfaces. So now if you have shape keys or armature deform, the hairs will follow the movement. This also requires the base mesh to be set. In addition to the wind effects, there is now a section for pulse effects. This will create almost like a living, moving hair strand. In the simulation settings, you can choose for the dynamics to affect the thickness so that you get a more natural stretching of the hair strand. If you have a thicker strand, at the root, you get something like this. If you want this to be aligned to the surface, you can try to tilt the root. However, there is a better option. If we go to the settings on the miscellaneous tab, you can check the align root to base surface, which is going to hug the base. So you get this nice uh, seamless transition. Uh, that said, this is not perfect. You can still break it if you have a very steep angle and a very wide root. You get a glitchiness like this. We are basically trying to align this to the surface, which is going to be quite difficult. In that case, you can click on this auto squish setting, which is going to flatten the root based on the angle with the surface. Uh, making it much easier to snap. The mesh and armature utility has a lot of improvements. Uh, now it works on every type of curve, not just hair curves. You can also set the start and end of the armature, uh, which is going to embed the bones uh, inside of the hair geometry. The B-Bone armature now follows an improved algorithm that uh, produces uh, better bendy bone chains. If you don't want to convert to mesh, you can now generate only the armature. And finally, here you can set the names of the generated bones to fit your naming convention. There is now a preset system. Here I've created a few presets for different hairstyles. Uh, you can use them to speed up your hair creation. Or if you want, you can create your own custom presets. After you've set all the settings the way you want them, just click on this plus button and uh, give your preset a name. And there you go. It should now appear in this drop down. To apply it, just click on the check mark. If you have a mirrored curve, sometimes you go to edit and uh, nothing is happening. That's because uh, it's this one. This is the main curve. It is a bit annoying sometimes. So to help you out, click on this uh, mirror ghosting and now. When you go to edit, you get this uh, outline of the mirrored strand, so you know immediately which one is the main one. I've created a Discord group for the add-on. If you go to this info panel, you see a link for the server. I've got a bunch of people asking me about that, so there, I've made it. Uh, I'm gonna upload, you know, change logs and just general information. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post it on here and get some help and, you know, just see what it's about. Link for this will be in the description as well.
All right. These are some of the changes. There are a lot more minor tweaks and improvements uh, for those CV full change log. All the links are going to be below. All right. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.